Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to this uh, overview video of the Scarlet Keys campaign. Uh, I will be talking about my um, thoughts on the box on, as a whole and uh, generally the new mechanics and uh, all that stuff that comes in the box. So let's get started. Okay, so I have just finished filming my initial playthrough of the uh, Scarlet Keys campaign and uh, I thought to make an overview video of all the mechanics and uh, stuff that are introduced in this box and the campaign as uh, I have experienced it. I have played it two times now. First I played it two player through the first time and the video uh, version that I played was through solo with Kumani Jones and uh, I will be talking about the experience as a whole. I won't go into detail on all the different scenarios. Uh, this campaign is a bit hard to cover because uh, each individual playthrough may differ on which scenarios you will be playing as you will decide after the first scenario the order in which you are playing them and depending on how much time you have spent, uh, those scenarios might get a bit different uh, in the setup and resolutions and all that stuff. So I decided to start from uh, the globe trotting aspect. So we have this map here. So uh, we start in London and after that you get to choose where you go on the map. So. Um, there are uh, scenario locations uh, scattered all throughout the map. Uh, at least what I found there are... Uh, there is one in uh, South Af America, uh, a couple scenarios uh, in North America, then there's a couple in Africa, um, uh, one, a few in Europe and a few in uh, Asia. So depending on the route you are taking, the campaign experience can differ a lot. So that is a really interesting aspect of this scenario, uh, this campaign. Uh, you will be recording how much time you have spent during the campaign. So some of the campaign scenarios will change depending on how much time you have spent. Uh, and uh, for example, in my uh, campaign playthrough, I was going to go to Marrakesh at the end of the campaign, but I had spent too much time, so when I arrived there, it was too late and I couldn't play the scenario anymore, so it uh, in immediately directed me to Resolution 5, which meant that uh, I got <laughs> a trauma and some experience for my troubles, but that's it. But if you go there first, uh, after the uh, first scenario you will get to play it and if you go there in mid campaign you get to play it but it is a completely different scenario at that point. So uh, the campaign booklet is a <laughs> monster. There is a lot of story text in this uh, thing and uh, the uh, different parts have codes here which uh, correspond to locations on the world map, so these locations all have like 11B or whatever, and you will have to search for the correct uh, page from this campaign booklet to find out if you are playing a scenario or if it's just a event you are um, experiencing at that location. Uh, also, uh, we have the time passed here, so uh, when the, you have spent uh, 35 time uh, the campaign will direct you to the final scenario and the campaign will end after that. So you can't keep on playing uh, after that point. And um, yeah, that's basically it for the campaign. Uh, how, how the globe trotting and uh, stuff work. Then we have a new mechanic which is the concealed co uh, mechanic. Uh, different enemies have concealed keywords and um, in a couple of scenarios there are also locations with the concealed keyword so when you uh, hit the concealed uh, ca card you will have to take these decoy cards and for example let's take the 
red glove man so if red glove man has concealed uh, two you take two decoys uh, then uh, you shuffle these together and put them on locations and uh, you have to for example uh, reveal the red glove man so you might go to a location and then uh, dependent on the location shroud you will uh, test either fight um, investigate or evade uh, x access the shroud of that location so for example if it's a Shroud 2 location, it's easy to reveal the concealed cards. So I would make a test, uh, for example, Kumani would evade. Uh, and if successful, we reveal a card. If it's a decoy, it just goes away. Uh, some cards might uh, trigger if you reveal a decoy, some enemy might hit you or something like that from the shadows. So those enemies will go to the shadows and you uh, can't interact with them on, uh, before you find the correct card after which the enemy comes from the shadows and engages you so that is the concealed mechanic and it is a fun mechanic I have to say I enjoyed playing with the concealed cards a lot there are a lot of deck building options to uh, deal with these concealed cards for example if you have a card that um, lets you discover a clue uh, for free for example uh, Mm, mm, let's think. Well, uh, well, there are cards that uh, let you, for example, pin an enemy for one damage. You get pin one card and reveal it. And of course, if you get a clue f free with some action, you could instead of getting the clue, uh, reveal one concealed card and try to find those enemies you need to find uh, that way. And. Uh, that's, that's an interesting mechanic and you have to think about that uh, when you are building your deck for this uh, campaign. Uh, there are a lot of scenarios. So in this playthrough I did with Kumani, I managed to find seven scenarios to play. Uh, I, I found eight, but I know there's like ten scenarios in the box. So I didn't play all of the scenarios because I ran out of time and uh, because I arrived late at one location so I couldn't play the scenario and uh, that that impacted the um, flow of the campaign so it's a bit <laughs> difficult to make the uh, campaign playthrough filmed and um, I didn't read any of the fluff text because there is a lot to read here so for example the Sangwan shadow scenario you will have to read all this and depending on wh what uh, you uh, decide to do, you read the different parts and that could change the setup, for example. Well, this scenario doesn't have more than one setup, but there are scenarios that have like three different setup uh, options dependent on the choices or the time you arrive there. So that's really interesting and that will uh, boost the replayability of this campaign a lot. Overall, um, the scenarios are fun, uh, mostly. I, I only ran into one scenario that wasn't really enjoyable playing with Kumani, but that, that is just... Uh, I, I think I had bad, bad luck in that, so I got some enemies and couldn't manage the enemies getting close faster than I did and all that. But overall, I would rank this campaign on my personal top three of all the campaigns out at the moment. So I can't say if this is uh, top one, two or three, but uh, it is up there with uh, the return to Bad to Carcosa and uh, for example, uh, my other favorite, which is the Dream Eaters. But that is of course personal uh, favor, which you enjoy the most. But of course, this, this is definitely one that I will be playing a lot. And after you have read those uh, walls of text one time, you don't have to read them again, and you basically know what's happening, so it will uh, make the campaign playthrough a bit faster. It was uh, sometimes really slow to get the campaign set up because you had to read a lot, uh, so you know what, what you have to do in the setup, and after that you set up, play the scenario, and then there's more text after that, so uh, a bit uh, story heavy, of course, some people like that. 
I like it in uh, um, uh, to a point, uh, but I think this started to feel like reading a novel and not playing that much. But um, after after the initial play, you will be able to skip a lot of the dialogue and just uh, play the scenarios and have a, have a good time if you are interested more in playing than uh, reading the reading the story. Of course, the story is amazing in this one. Um, you get a lot of choices in the scenarios what to do. Uh, dependent, you could uh, aid the Red Coterie or uh, try to aid the foundation that recruited you at the, uh, after the first scenario. So uh, that will depend uh, depend how the scenario goes uh, at the end. Because at the end of the uh, campaign, uh, before the final scenario, you will uh, have a vote uh, from the Coterie members. They will vote nay or yeah. Uh, dependent on how you interacted with them d during the campaign and uh, they will uh, either want to get rid of you or recruit you dependent on how you interacted with them uh, through the campaign. So that's an interesting one. Uh, uh, I actually tried to get recruited by the Coterie in this uh, playthrough with Kumani, but I ran, uh, fell one, I mean, I think two votes short of getting recruited, so I had nay votes which are good for you four times and yay votes which are bad for you five times. So uh, even though I tried, <laughs> I wasn't able to get the uh, coterie to recruit me. But that didn't matter. I, I was able to get those that uh, were watching for me uh, to back me in the last scenario and ended up, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, I managed to win the scenario uh, with this playthrough, but yeah, uh, all in all, a really good box. I would highly recommend you picking this up and playing it for yourself. So uh, nothing more for me to say. Uh, I will just quickly say that the player cards in this campaign are really fun to uh, include in your decks, even though you are not playing uh, the Scarlet Keys campaign with them. So if you are not uh, really interested in the campaign, at least pick up the player cards and play with those. Or if you are not that interested in uh, uh, the, those player cards and more interested in the campaign, just pick the campaign box. Because it's definitely one of the better ones so far. But uh, that is everything I wanted to say. Uh, overall, really good product. Uh, pick it up and try it out for yourself. Hope you guys like this overview video. Thanks for watching and until next time.